Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Walda, and this is my old friend, Jack. We were outside for a while, but it was pretty windy and chilly, so we decided to come in, take a break, and read a story. He loves stories about dogs, and he loves stories about cats. But what we're going to read today is Some Dog, and it's written by Mary Casanova. And just for your information, that dog happens to be a Basset Hound. Basset Hounds are rather quiet dogs. They like to howl, but they just don't really like to move around a whole lot. They're very comfortable in a sleepy position. Well, here's the story of George. And George had a good life. Look at him, all comfy on his pillow. And when the woman read the newspaper, George had a place to rest his weary head, right there. And when the man chopped wood, George studied a thousand cents in the wind. There he is, once again, sleepy George. And when they went fishing, George, who couldn't swim, rode in the middle, steady and still. There he is. You're some dog, said the woman. Some dog, said the man. They love George. But the day another dog arrived, everything changed. He must be astray, said the woman. Looks like he's here to stay, said the man. Aroom, cried George. Aroom, aroom, aroom. And like a jackrabbit, the stray leaped back and forth. Yeah, zippity, yappity, yip, yip, yip. And then he zipped around the room three times. Yip, yip, yip. What a lively dog, said the woman. Let's call him Zippity, said the man. Now, when the newspaper arrived, Zippity snatched it, flew over the couch, and dropped it in the woman's feet. Good dog. And when the man chopped wood, Zippity backflipped and caught sticks in midair. Amazing. And when the man and the woman biked to the corner store, Zippity ran ahead with the grocery list. And by the time they arrived, the shop owner had the groceries packed up and ready to go. What a dog. And when they all went fishing, Zippity jumped from George's back from lap to lap until he dove and caught a fish and swam to shore. That Zippity's some dog. Hmm. Yeah. Yippity, yippity, yip, yip, yip. Have you ever seen a dog catch a fish? Well, that night at dinner, George was just too tired to beg for food. And at bedtime, he was exhausted, but Zippity snored. Zip, zip, zip. Snored in his sleep. And poor George, he couldn't sleep. And one day, George's smell ran in the air, and before long, thunder grumbled. It was boom, boom, clang to rumble. George didn't mind. But with each clap of thunder, Zippity raced in crazy circles. He blinked, he chewed, he dashed, and crashed until finally, <gasps> out! You see, I think Zippity was scared of thunder. And rain poured down, and wind shook the treetops, and boom, a crack, a clang, and Zippity was gone. Into the storm he went. Oh, he'll get lost. It's a terrible storm. But George thumped his tail. At last, at last, he'll have his bed all to himself. George begged the woman, go find Zippity. George stretched and he groaned. Come on, George, the man pleaded. Here, George, the woman said, smell this, smell it. And George studied Zippity's blanket. If there was one thing George could do, it was follow a smell. With a nose like that, for sure, right, Jack? 
Through whipping wind and needle rain, George led the way, nose to the ground. He sniffed and he whiffed and he snorted and he twitched. He smelled a thousand scent, but followed only one. Past a farmhouse in shambles, a clothesline of thorny brambles, George tracked the scent. And when the man and the woman turned back, George pressed on, following his nose. He was not going to give up. Up steep steps and down he went to the bottom of a seesaw, to the ground again, along a slippery rail, over a rotted pine, down along the valley, through a swampy, murky mere. George kept going until his nose led him to a shivering, shaking, wet, and quaking zippity, stuck in the thick, oozy mud. Oh no, look at poor baby Zippity stuck in the mud. Oh no, Zippity whimpered and Zippity whined. He twisted and he turned and he wiggled and he churned. But the harder he tried to reach the bank, the deeper and the deeper and deeper he sank. And a George cried, a George is great at howling. Then George stretched himself across a log. He grabbed Zippity's collar and held fast, slow and steady and slow. George tugged and pulled and pulled and tugged until, look, look, there's Zippity, and he's got him by the collar. Oh, go, George, go. Oh, out, Zippity, pop. Oh, yeah, yippity, yippity, yip, yip, yip. Happy Zippity. Telling George, thank you. The dogs touched noses, then George led the way. He sniffed, he whiffed, he snorted, and he twitched. And he followed the trail through the swampy, murky mirror over a rotten pine down a slippery slide. Until... It's Zippity, they cried. You found him. Oh, George, you're some dog, said the man. Our dog, said the woman. From that day on, George and Zippity got along just fine. George always had a place to rest his weary head, and every day he studied a thousand cents on the wind, and when they all went fishing, George rode in the middle, steady and still. And most nights, George didn't mind sharing. Seep, 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 even in his sleep. I think they became friends. Oh, and you know what, boys and girls? Looking at Jack, I would say that he's tired too, and he's sleeping too. I hope you enjoyed this story, Some Dog. Thanks for listening.